So hello everyone, my name is Vincent Andrachik. I will present our work on automatic segmentation of head and neck tumors in PET CT scans that I've done with several collaborators from different institutions here at the bottom. I will start by introducing radiomics, which is the main motivation for our automatic tumor segmentation. So radiomics is the prediction of disease characteristics using quantitative image biomarkers from medical images. In this image, we have MRI images with annotated tumor regions in red. Visual biomarkers can be extracted from these regions, such as the intensity and texture in the tumor and its shape. And these features can be used to train models to predict clinical data. For example, the pretreatment signature of a tumor region can be used to predict the response to treatment and survival time of patients with cancer, which is extremely important for their care. Now, head and neck cancer is the fifth leading cancer by incidence. Radiomic studies have been proposed based on PET-CT images to predict patients' prognosis in a non-invasive fashion. But a major limitation of these studies is the cohort size, with 100 to 400 patients, and larger cohorts are required for estimating generalization of the radiomics models. But manual annotations in 3D to create larger cohorts are tedious and error-prone. And this is why we need automatic segmentation of head and neck tumors. But surprisingly, the problem of tumor segmentation in PET-CT images has been little investigated in the literature. So we now present the experiments we proposed in the paper. We have 203 PET-CT volumes with ground truth annotations. The annotations include primary gross tumor volumes and lymph nodes. The data is multicentric with four centers, and we run a leave one center out cause validation. So repeatedly training on three centers and evaluating on one. Then we compare 2D and 3D CNNs, so UNETs and VNETs, and we compare PET-only, CT-only, and multimodal approaches, combining the two. <clears throat> so these are the results we obtained, evaluated by uh, dice scores, precision, and recall. In the table, we mainly see that the model trained on PET images performs better than the CT one. This, this is expected as the PET image reflects the metabolic activity of the tumor with a good tumor localization. However, we also see that adding the information of morphological tissue properties from the CT image improves the performance. Also, the resolution of the ground truth is the same as, as the CT, higher than the PET image. So the CT can add fine grain details for the segmentation. So altogether, the best results are obtained with the late fusion of the two modalities. We also see that the 2D unit performs slightly better than the 3D unit. And this is now the count histogram of dice scores. We see the mode around 0 0.7 and a few cases with very low scores where the tumor was sometimes completely missed. <clears throat> and finally, at the bottom, these are two qualitative results illustrating the complementarity of PET and CT information. The ground truth is in red and the automatic segmentation in green. On the left, it is using only the CT information. In the middle, only the PET, and the fusion is on the right. In the first example of the, on the top row, the CT information helps to discard a false positive detected in the PET image. At the bottom, the, the PET helps to discard another large posit, false positive. And in both cases, we obtain a good fusion result on the right. So in conclusion, Automatic segmentation of head and neck tumors is necessary for large-scale radiomic studies. Overall, we showed promising results and the complementarity of PET and CT information. Of course, more details can be found in the paper. And finally, I would like to mention that we are organizing the Hector Challenge at MICAI 2020. We have extensively cleaned the annotations and added data to allow participants to evaluate and compare the segmentation algorithms on this task. Thank you.